LA show thank you guys so much for tuning back in to another LA show a couple stories that are affecting the youth um, young boys in particular so please stay tuned also I want you guys to check out my podcast on all of these listed platforms below we can discuss stories with absolutely no censorship so please be sure to check that out also follow me on all of the listed platforms above I really do appreciate you guys. Let's get into these stories. I got an article here from thesun.com. Handed to monsters, toddler tortured to death with every finger snapped after social workers gave him to two family friends. This was posted on April 16th of 2020. Little Lamari Boone also had two broken arms, multiple broken ribs, and severe head trauma, according to Metro. Amari Boone died on Easter Sunday after family and cops say he was beaten to death. Social workers say Amari was in state custody and was being looked after by two male family friends, the news outlet reported. No one has been charged and police have not named any suspects. Amari's mother said she warned welfare workers that her young son was being mistreated and even gave them photos as evidence. They failed miserably, Ariana George told NBC in Dallas-Fort Worth. Because I gave them the information they needed and the pictures that I had. She lost custody of Amari about a year ago when she became homeless, she told the station. Amari lived with an aunt for some time, but the aunt could not look after him anymore. A judge ordered him to live with friends of his parents, she said. We both thought we knew them, George told NBC. It is alleged that Amari was beaten to death on Good Friday at a home in Fort Worth, Texas. He was declared brain dead on Easter Sunday when the life support machine was turned off. I'm really trying to seek out justice for my son, Father Rodney Boone told the Star-Telegram. I want my son's voice to be heard because he can't speak out anymore. He was a beautiful, bright child who did not deserve this. I want his voice to be heard. Boone told the newspaper that Amari had a swollen face and a black eye during a recent video chat session the last time he saw him. He got a call from a hospital two days later saying that his son had suffered a seizure. It was a hard pill to swallow at the moment, Boone told the Star-Telegram. Every time I saw my son, he had a different injury, Boone told the paper. If the caseworkers had been visiting him like they said they were, they would have seen something. But they told us they never found anything wrong. Child Protective Investigations is also investigating Amari's death and trying to find out who is responsible. Amari was in the state's legal custody and he and his younger brother were living with friends of the family, a statement said. Before the children were allowed to live in that home, background checks and visits to the home were conducted. The judge overseeing the children's CPS case approved the placement. Amari's murder comes weeks after a Netflix documentary recalled the life of Gabriel Fernandez, who died in California in 2013 after years of abuse. The trials of Gabriel Fernandez described the failed opportunities to save him. He was eight years old. I have another article here from StarTelegram.com. Fort Worth father wants justice for three-year-old son killed in homicide. This was posted April 14th of 2020. I'm not going to read the whole article, just snippets of it. No arrests have been made in the case as of Tuesday. Fort Worth police are asking to speak with anyone who knows any information about the homicide or any physical abuse that occurred at the apartment in the 1200 block of Dover Cliff Court, where Amari and his younger brother, 19-month-old Levi Boone, had been staying. Amari's younger brother has now been moved out of that home and placed in a foster home, Gonzalez said. Specific details about the family's prior involvement with DFPS are confidential, according to the statement. Boone said the appearance of his son's cuts and bruises did not start showing up until the CV stay-at-home orders were issued about a month and a half ago. Boone said he wanted to reunite the children with their mother, but he could never get a satisfactory reason as to why that could not happen. He and Amari's mother had gotten jobs and he had gotten transportation while she was closing in on a place to stay. Boone said Amari's mother was also nearly finished with the classes that were assigned to her by CPS caseworkers, Boone said. According to healthcare workers at Cook Children's, 
Amari's death is the third child fatality in less than a month due to child abuse. Since March 17th, eight children have been admitted to Cook Children's Medical Center for injuries related to child abuse. Three of those children died. To help put that number in perspective, Cook Children's typically sees six child abuse deaths a year, a statement from the hospital said. I have another article here from NBCDFW.com. Mother of boy who died in state custody says she warned CPS he was in danger. This was posted April 14th of 2020. The death of a three-year-old Fort Worth boy who died on Easter Sunday in state custody is being investigated as a murder. And his mother says she warned child welfare workers weeks ago that he was being physically abused. Amari Boone, who was in the custody of court-appointed caregivers, was taken to Cook Children's Medical Center Friday morning with severe head trauma, police said in a statement. In addition, his parents said every one of his fingers and both arms were broken. He was amazing, his mother Ariana George said. He was the most brightest spirit you ever met. George lost custody of her son about a year ago after she fell on hard times and became homeless, she said. And when she couldn't take care of him anymore, a judge ordered him to live with two men who were friends of his parents. We both thought we knew them, George said. But soon after getting custody, the friends took him to the hospital with a sprained ankle, saying he fell down some stairs, according to the parents. During a visit early last month, Amari's mother said she noticed what appeared to be new bruises and a swollen lip and eyes. She said she complained to CPS and even sent them photos as evidence. I gave it to my CPS caseworker, I gave it to her supervisor, and I gave it to my boy's lawyer, George said. But nobody did anything, she said. His mother said he'd still be alive if CPS had taken her complaint seriously. In a statement, CPS said it is working with Fort Worth Police Department to find out what happened and who was responsible. This is a horrific, horrible story. And it also points out flaws in the CPS system. The last thing we want is for these people to come and get our children. Think about it. We have got to be strong. Leave a red heart for Amari Boone in the comment section and let me know what you think. Also send love, light, and prayers to his family. Also, there is a petition for Amari Boone on change.org. Please go sign that petition. So this next story kind of coincides with the previous story. This story is just outrageous, but it's a good way to think about the logic in how CPS is warranted to come in and get your kids. Also, this isn't the first time that this particular story has happened. I see an article from ChicagoNow.com where a 16-year-old had a birthday party with strippers involved back in 2013. This article comes from UpNewsInfo.com. Cincinnati mom hires strippers for 14-year-old birthday party. Live streams the event. This was posted April 28th of 2020. Cincinnati mom is currently being investigated by CPS. According to MTO News, the mother allegedly hired two strippers to perform at her son's 14th birthday party and posted photos and videos of the incident online. The incident occurred during the CV quarantine of 2020. While the city was closed, and citizens were urged to carry out social distancing. The mother decided to surprise her son and his friends by hiring two strippers who would perform for the children and give the teens lap dances. According to the mother, sexual contact between the children and the strippers were not allowed. But images from the event show that the children were allowed to grope the adult dancers. When the video images started to go viral, people questioned why a mother would organize such an inappropriate party for a child. The mother didn't seem to think there was a problem. She claims that as long as there was no sexual intercourse between the children and the dancers, it was all fun. In a Facebook post, the mother says, You girls need to worry about y'all kids and how y'all raise y'all. My extra straight, my son was happy as F. It ain't like they was effing y'all 12. 
That's how she wrote it. That's how I had to read it. Unfortunately for her, several people contacted the Cincinnati Department of Children's Services and reported her actions. MTO News contacted the department as well as the Cincinnati Police Department for any comments on the pending investigations. They offered no comment. Now, I just think that this is just disgusting. And I just want to know why. Why would you risk your children, risk your own reputation? Let me know what you guys think down below about this story. I got an article here from the IndieChannel.com. Indy, eight-year-old, was eating dinner when he was killed by a stray bullet, IMPD says. This was posted on April 27th of 2020. Indianapolis. It's been nearly a month since eight-year-old Indianapolis boy was shot and killed inside of his home and detectives are hoping someone will come forward with new information that will help them find the person responsible for firing the shot that killed him. Roderick Payne Jr. was shot and killed by what police believes was a stray bullet that entered his home in the 3200 block of North Tacoma Avenue on March 31st of 2020. Very few details have been released about the shooting that led to Roderick's death, but Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department Detective Chris Edwards said they know the bullet that hit him came from outside of his home. He was in the process of finishing his dinner. He was in his own living room when a bullet passed through one of the windows of his house and struck him Edward said he wasn't out doing things he wasn't supposed to be doing. He was eating dinner in his own home and did absolutely nothing to bring this upon himself. Edward said family members have described Roderick as an average eight-year-old boy. He liked to read. He liked to ride his bike. He liked to color. I also understand he was very talented. Edward said last year he won his school's talent show and he also was a regular in his church's choir. Detectives have said they are unsure who the target was that night, but they know several shots were fired in the area. At least one of those shots went through a window and struck Roderick. They believe the person who was the intended target may hold the key to finding Roderick's killer. We believe there are people out there who absolutely know the details about what happened. We need those people to come forward, Edward said at least the person who was getting shot at. We don't care why they were getting shot at, but that person knows who was shooting at them and they know why it happened. We really need those people to come forward and speak to us. If we don't want things like this to keep happening in our communities, people need to step up and do the right thing, Edward said. This was a child, eight years old. So we have a story here where this little boy, this baby boy was just sitting back, minding his business, not bothering anybody. And he struck with a freaking bullet. This story done really got up under my skin. I mean, it just makes me so mad because this little boy is innocent. Please let me know what you think about Roderick's story down below. Also leave a blue comment for him and Send your love, light, and prayers to his family. I'm sure they need it. Thank y'all for tuning in and listening to these stories. I feel as though they need to be told. They need to be heard. Also, follow me on all of my social media platforms for more stories in our community. I will be back with more. Once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in.